Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to create Kanban board views in Power Apps. We will leverage multiple galleries to create the board view experience. The main gallery will create the columns or the swim lanes, and the nested gallery will showcase all the items relative to the column category the items belong to. I will also showcase my Power App, which will include six different Kanban board view styles along with different features. So let's check this out in action. A Kanban board is one of the tools that you can use to manage work at a personal or organizational level. Kanban boards visually depict work at various stages of a process using cards to represent the work items and columns to represent each stage of the process. Now in modern SharePoint lists or Microsoft lists, we now have the ability to create a new view called the board view, wherein you can organize your list in the form of boards here I have a work progress tracker list. I will create a board view and organize the board by the progress column and click create. And this now showcases all those list items in the form of a board view categorized by the progress. I can select an existing item and move it to a different column, which would change the status of the column depending upon the status in which I dropped that list item in. You can think of these as swim lanes, wherein I can simply select an item and put it in a specific lane. Microsoft Planner as well has board views. I can select a task and move it across to a different swim lane, which would in turn change the status of that specific task. And I can group my tasks in Planner in my board view by buckets or progress and other metadata. Now, keeping all of this in mind, here is an example of a power app in which you can create that same Kanban board style experience for your data, no matter where your data lives. In this example, I'm leveraging that same SharePoint list called Work Progress Tracker. In this app, I have six different Kanban board styles that I have created. I will be sharing this app, the link so this app will be in the description of this video. So you can go ahead, download the sample app and try it out right away. In the board view style one, I have my work progress items categorized by the status of the item. I can select a specific item on the board. It will go ahead and highlight it in bold, and then I can move it from one status to another. For a task that says calendar control video, is not started, I will move it to the right. So this will now change the status of that specific task to in progress and it will highlight it right here in the swim lane for in progress. And I can do the same thing by selecting any specific task and moving it from one swim lane to another. Next, style two. The functionality is similar, but the design and the style here is different. So I'll take a task, desktop flows. I will move this to the completed status. Next, style three. Here, I'm also showcasing the count of the total number of items in that specific swim lane. I have my task, which is learn Power BI. I will move it from the blocked status to behind status. So I will select this and move it to the right. And we can see how the count is changing on the fly. Let's take the project report update in progress item and move it to the completed status. Count for in progress has changed to one and the completed count got updated to five. Next, I have Kanban board style four. Here, I've given an additional capability wherein the user can select the category based upon which they would like to create the board. Currently, it says progress board, so it shows all the task items categorized based on the progress. If I change the board to priority, it will now categorize the board view based upon the priority of the items. 
So project report update, this one is high priority. I will select this and move it to the left. So I'll increase its priority to critical. If I go back to my progress board, here is my progress report update. We can see the metadata on this task has changed to critical. So that's the board selector view. Next, I have the Kanban board style. Here, I have gone ahead and given the full CRUD create, read, update, delete feature set related to my task list. The board functionality is the same. I can select a task and move it across the different swim lanes. But here, there are some additional features. I can delete this existing item. I can go and edit the item, which will open the form associated with that item. So let's say I change the status from medium to critical and submit. I will see that change reflected on my board right in the same screen experience. I've also provided the ability for the user to filter the items that they see on the board view. For example, I'll search for learn. So it will only showcase those tasks where the title has the word learn. I can reset my filter. I can filter based on task ID. I can filter based on priority. And I can add a combination of filters. For example, show me all those tasks which have the title flow and the priorities high. I have one task associated with it. And the user also has the ability to create a new task on the fly by clicking on the plus icon. I'll create a task in the not started status. Once I select this, it will preset the status to not started. So I've gone ahead and filled the form, added a task title as app in a day. I will click submit. And the moment I do that, my item is created in my SharePoint list and the status of that is not started. And we can see that item created right here. And the final Kanban board view, I tried to make this look as realistic as possible. It has a background image here of a board. I have these sticky notes that create a very realistic visual experience. Once again, all of this data is coming from that same backend work progress tracker SharePoint list. I can select a specific task and then move it across the different statuses on the board. Now let's try and create a Kanban board view experience leveraging a SharePoint list. I have a list that maintains information about devices that my organization has procured. And I have a status column, which is a choice column, and it has three statuses related to my devices. The Kanban view that we will create will be based on the status column. So to create the Kanban view experience, first, we will go ahead and connect to our SharePoint list. I'll plug in my site URL and click connect. I will connect to my asset manager SharePoint list and connect. To start adding my swim lanes in the board view experience, I will insert a gallery control. And here I will select a blank horizontal gallery. I will span this across the width of my screen. I will edit the gallery by clicking on this pencil icon and insert a label control. For the items property of this gallery, I need the status column choices. There is a formula that we can leverage. It's called choices. The name of my data source, which is connected in my app asset manager dot the column that is status. Now, once I have this in place, if I open this, it has a column that it creates called value. And in there, I have all my three choices. Now for the label control that I added in the gallery, the text for this, I will change this to this item dot value. So this will now show all those choice values. Next, I will edit the gallery again. Now this is the template size of this horizontal gallery, which is the width. I would want to utilize the full real estate that's available on the screen. So for the gallery control, the template size property, I will set this as parent dot width. That's the entire width of the screen divided by count rows of 
my gallery dot all items depending upon the number of choices it will go ahead and divide the space on my screen equally now this label control notice is not spanning across the entire width of the template so for the width property of this label control i will use parent dot template width and the text i would like to center align it now i would like to give each of these a background color so i can use the fill property i will change the color depending upon the status so i'll use the switch function switch this item dot value which will have the status if the value is in use then i'll use the color blue if it is available i'll use the color dark green and if it is in repair i'll use the color dark red the color property for the label control i'll change this to white if i preview my app now i have my three swim lanes depending upon the status column in my asset manager list next we need to show the items related to each of these different categorizations my main gallery i will edit and in here i will insert a vertical gallery control this i'll set the y position to begin right below the label and the height of this gallery i'll span all the way to the bottom since i have that much real estate to play with and i will squeeze this gallery inside the space for the items property of this gallery i will use the function filter my data source where my status column which is a choice column dot value is equal to this item dot value and this item dot value will give me the current value of the category we have this image control in my sharepoint list I have my device photo column which is a column of type image for the image property of the image control I will use this item dot the name of my image column which is device photo dot there's this property called full this should go ahead and plug in the image of my device next I have this title I will change this to this item dot title so I'll show the title property associated with my record in SharePoint and then I have the subtitle control I will use this item dot I have a column called asset type which is a choice column so I'll use dot value it gives me the value of that asset so if I preview my app I have my board view now organized based on the status of my assets and it showcases all those assets that are in those specific statuses now next step is to provide the user the option to move these items across the different statuses to do that i will have to provide icons or buttons and when the user selects it i would like to move it to the next status i need to have my choices that i'm querying from my sharepoint list I need to have some sort of ID here which gives me the number associated with the choice. And to do that for the app object I'll go to the on start function. This is the first function that gets called when the app loads. Here I will first create a collection so I'll use clear collect. I'll give this a name. I'll call this collection of statuses. This I will load based on once again my choices function. my sharepoint list dot my status column and then i'll go ahead and create a second collection that will have that sequence of numbers in it and to do that i will use the for all function i'll use the sequence function the sequence will be based upon the number of rows inside my status collection so for each of these go ahead and create another collection i'll call this collection status sequence and here i will add a couple of properties i'll add the value property which will hold the value so i've used this function it basically grabs the value of 
the running item inside this for all loop sequence. And then I need the row number. So I will add a row number column, which I will set it to value. Close my functions and click format text. And right before for all, I would just make sure that I clear this collection prior to loading it. Now to run this function, I will right click on the app object and click run on start. Once this run is complete, if we look at this collection, which is collection status sequence, in this we have two columns. One is called value, which has the values coming in from my choices column in SharePoint. And additionally, I have the row number, the sequence. Now, if I head back to my gallery, my main gallery, I was using the choices function. Now, instead of this, I will replace this with my collection of status sequence. And inside my sub gallery here, I have this right icon. This I would like to only show if the row number of the current status, which is my swim lane in my board view, is not the last row. Because if it is the last row, I should not be having the right icon. For example, in repair, there should be no option for me to move it to the right. There is no status on the right. So for that, in my main gallery, gallery one, I will edit and I will add a label. And this, I will use this item dot row number. So this will put out the row number associated with the swim lane. Calling this label LBL row number, the visibility of this, I'm gonna set it to false so the user does not see this. For my nested gallery, I will edit. And for the next arrow, visible property, I will use that row number label that I added. So row number dot text. And this is going to be numeric. So I can typecast this to a number by using the value function. This should not be equal to the last row. So I can leverage the count rows function to get the total number of count in my collection, which is my sequence collection. If I preview the app, observe that the right icon only shows up for in use and available. It does not show up for in repair since that is the last row. Now on similar lines, in my gallery two, I will edit and insert a left arrow icon. And I will place it right here. The visibility for this specific icon would be my hidden label, which is LBL row number dot text typecasted as a value is not equal to one. If I preview the app, the left icon does not show for the first row, but shows up for all other rows. When the user selects the next arrow or the previous arrow, we need to change the status of that specific item. So on the on select function of the next arrow, I will use the patch function to patch or update my specific item. Patch in my SharePoint list, which is asset manager. I would like to patch the current item. So this item and the update that I want to make is to the status column, which is a choice column. I have done a video on patching for all the different column types in SharePoint. I place that link in the description of this video value of the value that I want to patch it to is the next choice value, which is the next status category in my board view. And to get that, I will use the lookup function on my collection, which was called status SEQ, which has the row numbers in it, where row number is equal to the current row number that this specific record is in. And to get that, I can use my hidden label control, which is LBL row number dot text typecasted to value. And here I will add one to it. So it moves to the next item. I will close the lookup function. This will give me the record in that collection. I need the value, which has the exact name of that choice value. So I'll pick the value property here. This completes my update property. So I will close the curly braces. I'm only updating the status column. So I will close the curly braces again. 
and then close the patch function by putting the round brace. I will preview my app. Let's take an example of an item that is in the in use status LTA320. I will click on this right icon. We can see how this has moved to the swim lane for the available status, and here is that specific record. The most recent modified records to be shown right at the top for the nested gallery can add a sort function, sort based on the modified column in descending order. So it will always place the latest item right there on the top. Next, to move the records to the left, we have the left icon. For this one, I will simply copy the code that I have on select of my right icon. Go to the left icons on select property, paste that code in there. And the only change I have to make here is instead of plus one, I will change this to minus one since I want to go one row back. So let's preview the app and try this out. Let's take that same record LTA320 and move it left. So it now goes back to the in use status. Let's take the in repair item and move it to the available status. Let's take one in the available status and move it to the in repair status. So that's how you can create this Kanban board view like experience directly inside Power Apps. And you have the full capabilities to design or style your boards as I showed you earlier in the different board styles that I created. Go ahead, download the app, connect it to your work progress tracker list in SharePoint. It's a standard Microsoft list template that you can leverage. And I will be waiting for your feedback in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.